Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric, where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. The fire fades, and the lords go without throne. Hello everyone, <laughs> it's Stefan, aka Mecha Small Time, and uh, welcome squad to a new game. Uh, I'm going to be playing Dark Souls, I haven't made a video in, a, in quite some time, I've um, been working on Uptown Strangers with my buddy Brendan over there, and uh, I kind of neglected my channel a little bit, I just wanted to add some content to it, uh, I didn't want to just abandon it like that, so... Here we are, yeah. Uh, so we're playing Dark Souls. Woo! God, uh, I've already beat the game on PC. I'm playing on PC or uh, PS4 right now. Um, in fact, this is actually my second recording of this game. Uh, I had an issue of the first recording. It was just some of the worst play I've ever had in a Souls game, and uh, I didn't want to upload it. I was just upset about. It. I got like six episodes deep too. Anyway, so I have a certain plan for this uh, series for Dark Souls 3. Um, I want to look at lore. 
uh, do a little bit of exploration. Uh, kind of show off some little things that I've discovered while playing. But uh, I'm going to try to talk about lore. Because lore is really cool um, in this game at least. Uh, to those of you who are like unfamiliar with the game, the way it handles its lore, uh, it's very, um, it's kind of like choose your own adventure style lore. You find lore in descriptions for items, sometimes in, uh, character dialogue, but for the most part, the lore is very just up to your own imagination, uh, and up to your own interpretation. So, like, there are some things set in stone. For example, uh, Lord Gwyn, uh, the Lords of, of Fire, the First Lords, um, the Dragons, things like that. But then there are some, like, exceptions as to what happens in between key and major events. Um, so right now, in this, in this game at least, um, I don't know how far into the future this is, but... It's set way past the events of Dark Souls 2 and way, way past the events of Dark Souls 1. But there are going to be a lot of reoccurring themes from both games. Mainly from Dark Souls 1, but there will be some from Dark Souls 2. And that's going to kind of help tie things together a little bit. So here's our first bonfire. And when you sit at the bonfire, you get... The rest emote, yay! Um... <laughs> <clears throat> I'm also going to talk about some, like, kind of boss strategies. Um, I'm not, like, amazing at this game. Like, as you can just see right there. In fact, I haven't played the game in uh, about a week or so, so I'm a little rusty. Uh, but, we'll see how well we do. And like I said, the frame rate's a little weird, so I might die quite often. As I learned from my last playthrough. But anyway, let's continue. This guy is going to shoot, and I'm going to say nope, and then I'm going to kill you. Uh, so here we have our first boss. Ooh, Cleric's Charm. We're from the start. That's nice. That's going to be good. Uh, the build I'm going for is a little bit of a hybrid thing. I'll show you my stats real quick. Um, I started out as a Pyromancer. And the reason why is because Intelligence and Faith are really high. So Strength is also 12 and Dexterity is 9, which means I'll be able to boost that up quite easily for the weapon that we want to use. And you'll see what weapon that is rather soon, actually. But anyway, here's a Eudix Gundry or something like that. Um, really cool boss. And you learn a lot more about his lore later on because you do fight him again. But you'll notice those black that black abyss coming out of his back. Uh, that's going to be important to note later. But anyway, let's begin. So we're going to pull the coiled sword from the sheath of man. Or the whatever. And he's going to get up. He's gonna be all angry at us. Alright. Ooh. So. Eudix. Can be tough for a lot of new players. Um, he's really like your introduction to the Dark Souls series. If you haven't played, or if you started with. Uh, or if you started with Bloodborne. He can be quite annoying. Especially if you're not used to... Especially if you're not used to um, Dark Souls bosses. Uh, in fact, I didn't even actually know that I killed him. I didn't know how low his health was and I didn't get to show something. He is super weak to fire. So if you're a Pyromancer and you have Fireball, you can do a shit ton of damage with him. Uh, they do have some starting gifts in the beginning. I chose the Soul of the Name of Soldier just to get some extra money. Probably not the best thing to start with. Um, but, essentially, when you start with firebombs, uh, you can take them out easy if you're not starting as a pyromancer. Um, most of his moves are just dodgeable. It's really just about rolling. So he's going to teach you timing, and timing is so important in this game. Uh, dodge rolling, for the most part, is often the main strategy for most bosses. And one thing you have to learn in Dark Souls, especially, don't always roll away. Roll away if it's going to be like an AoE attack or something that keeps the enemy stationary. Like, for example, if they're going to ground, if they're going to pound the ground to do like an explosion or something like that, or they're going to stand still and shriek to do like some sort of like shockwave. Uh, things like that you want to roll away from. But um, usually when it's an attack, 
a melee attack a um sometimes even magic attacks like uh they're gonna throw a fireball or they're gonna throw like a, a soul arrow or something you want to roll towards them because you'll end up behind them and usually away from the arc of whatever long reaching weapon <laughs> or attack they have because that's usually the case with most of these things um yeah i don't know why i'm doing this more like a tutorial thing because i have a lot of friends that play dark souls but i also have equally as many friends if not more friends that don't play dark souls in fact a lot of them really do believe that this game is truly difficult and it's not it's i mean it's hard don't get me wrong it's not like this game is a cakewalk or anything but it is definitely uh doable with the right knowledge yeah <laughs> take that so there's two ways to go up here. I'm not going to go that way because then you have to fight all three of those guys. and Or four of those guys. I mean, they're not difficult or anything. I just don't feel like dealing with it. Um, there's another reason why I started out as a pyromancer. There's an enemy quite early on in the game which we're about to fight. Not this guy. Um, I fucking hate the dogs in this game. Um, there's another enemy we're about to fight before we continue. Um, oh, you know what? We did pick up an item. Actually, now that I think about it, we picked up the coil sword. Um, this is was this was inside Viudix, the uh, the boss we just fought. So if you look at the information, thrust into the shrine. Uh, yeah. Sword missing from the shrine shrine bonfire cannot be equipped as a weapon. Thrust into the shrine bonfire to restore its power and enable travel between bonfires. Um, yeah, it seems like after the events of Dark Souls One, every bonfire was linked um, fully, so you were able to. Um, travel between each bonfire afterwards. Uh, this sword is only bequeathed to chosen chosen Ash, as judged by Eudix, who awaits the arrival of Ash as a scabbard. So, essentially, he's like a he's like a, a scabbard, like he's a sheath, like he's holding this weapon or this curl, coil sword for us, the chosen Ash, which is different from the undead, uh, as you will find out later. Or waits the arrival of Ash as a scabbard. Well. Cool little thing there. I love that. Like, I love kind of the dark horror take on, um, medieval fantasy settings. Anywho. So the enemy I was telling you about before, the, like, rather difficult enemy more difficult than the boss <laughs> if you believe it is this asshole behind me I'm about to go to him he's right over here just wanted to grab that item real quick it's, it's gonna come in handy later this is this guy up here I don't know if you can see him but he has a katana and he's a jerk so we're gonna just cheese him out with some fire magic now, he does this, like, charge up attack thing. That, right there, is annoying. That'll do a lot of damage, like a quick slash. Um, but, for the most part, he can be cheesed with magic. As you can see, the magic doesn't do a, uh, doesn't do a lot of damage. But, it does do just enough to damage him. Um, so we're gonna... Oh, that's gonna... That would have hurt a lot if I didn't have that up. Okay, you could just walk away. Alright, so I ran out of thing. Now, they added this new thing. Um, so you have focus points. Is what, that's going to be for your magic. But so you will run out of it, just like I just did right now. But they added the Ash and Estus Flask, which is going to allow us to regain that and use our abilities once again. Okay, that's not good. Jeez, man. Just die. Nobody likes your face. <gasps> oh my god, look how much damage he does. Alright, he should be dead. No, he's not dead. He's gonna kill me. Alright, now he's dead. Yeah, that's the easy way to do it. Um, if you want to fight him. And there's a reason why I killed him. Um, the main reason why I killed him is because he becomes a help, some, a helpful summons later for one of the first boss, or the first real bosses in the game, not the tutorial training boss that's known as Eudix. Um, we can't open this door, unfortunately. It is locked. 
Um, as you can see, it says Fire Lake Shrine. Pre prematurely, this you know, destroying the surprise, but we're gonna fix that soon. Anyway, there's an East-West Shield, which is a um, shield that's really good for magic resistance. You'll see here on the right, in the middle of the screen, it'll show guard absorption. Um, magic resistance goes up to 70 with it, so it's actually quite decent. It's actually better than my um, Caduceus round shield, so I'm actually going to switch to it now. Anyway, so we're going to go rest at a bonfire. Which is right down here. So this is Firelink Shrine. As you can see, there's an item up there. Um, Firelink Shrine is from Dark Souls One, and this may not be the Firelink Shrine that uh, we're all we all know and love. This might be another one. But just like all uh, bonfires, there is a fire keeper that is ready to tend to it. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I'm a fire keeper. I tend to the flame, and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones, and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. So she'll allow you to level up. You can talk to her some more to get some more information from her. Ashen one, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen one, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. So essentially she's saying, kill people, gather their souls, and use it like money to level up. Yeah, nourish the souls, blah, blah, blah. Uh, she really never... Okay, we want to get to 12, I believe. Actually, I don't remember if it was 12 or 15. Mmm, it's a 12, doesn't matter really. Alright, and we'll level up Vigor and Luck. I actually like to spend my last point in Luck. Luck is a pretty interesting stat. It's a stat that was actually introduced in Demon Souls. It governs, um, let's see if I can go over it. So it governs, it governs thing like, uh, things like item discovery. It boosts it up so that you can find thing, find drops better. Um, but it also ups your bleeding and poison capabilities, uh, and also governs resistance to curses. Curses are fucking annoying, they're one-hit kill abilities, fuck that shit. Um, but, if you have a bleeding poison build, if you're using weapons or arrows or whatever, um, this might actually be a stat you want to boost. I actually highly recommend boosting it up, not dramatically, but to at least like 15 or 20, get some good drops, and your curse resistance, and also you're going to find weapons that do bleeding, that you may not even know have bleeding as an option. Poison is a little weird in this game. It used to be really powerful, but I have yet to see its use. Farewell, Ashen One. May the flames guide thee. Maybe a little racist. Huh? Nah, just a little bit. Okay. Let's put the coil sword to use. Oh, look, this guy died. I don't know how he died, but he's dead. That's all that matters. Bonfire lit. So now we can rest at the bonfire. When we rest, you're going to notice my health and everything go back up. Yep. Anyway, so we have some more work to do here at the bon at the shrine. Uh, so let's take a look. There are a lot of NPCs you can meet here. Um, and it's good to, to come back here because this is your hub pretty much. This is going to be where uh, You take a rest. Nothing can kill you. Nothing really wants to kill you um, So yeah, take this opportunity to chill uh, You're going to notice that various NPCs will appear randomly So it's good to come back here after every major event in the game such as opening certain locked doors um, Killing bosses. It's always good to come back just to kind of see and catch up on your NPCs um, just to see what their storylines are like because some of them are actually really cool and really interesting. So here is the Shrine Maiden, or I believe. A pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the Shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and 
birds' bells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> So she's a merchant, essentially. She never really has anything too interesting to say, um, unlike the hand, unlike uh, the bonfire keeper. The fire keeper for this bonfire for the Firelink Shrine, she says the same shit throughout most of the game. But uh, it isn't until the very end that she becomes super interesting. Uh, she has a lot of interesting dialogue and plays a really key point to your story. Um, but yeah, here you can purchase items. Uh, you can buy things like the soapstone for um, cooperative play. Uh, you can also buy any shields and armor. In fact, I'm going to buy the chain helm right now. And she also sells this key for 20,000 souls. Uh, yeah. That key is very important. You're going to want it. Ashen one. Yeah, yeah, bring souls. Um, and over here, when I first saw this guy, I almost flipped out. In fact, I flipped out when I saw her because I was like, "Oh, she's from Dark Souls 2. That's awesome." Uh, the she was a um, same kind of character model for a character. They were fire keepers that were no longer fire keepers. Like their fire had their uh, bonfire had faded. They were no longer tending to it, and they just go to this like in this place that's kind of like in between time or in between worlds, and they would just kind of live out the rest of their lives there, um, and kind of guide other undead. So it's interesting to see that she's undead um, in this case. Uh, I'll explain that later when we find a certain item. But anyway, uh, yeah, she's dead. But this guy, this motherfucker, this guy over here, this cool man, he is Andre of Astora, which he will tell us in a second. But he's freaking cool. Um, he's from Dark Souls 1. He's our friendly blacksmith. He had a, a bigger role uh, in Dark Souls 1, but they had to cut it due to whatever reason. They, maybe they just didn't feel like it made sense. Or maybe it was too explanatory. Uh, but he's back. So let's see what he has to say. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I'd wager. You require good arms. Let me smith your weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. So essentially, he's just going to help you reinforce your weapons, make them stronger. Um, you just bring him the right crafting material in the form of shards, like titanite shards, titanite um, chunks, and whatever. And you'll be able to level up your weapons, as you can see, reinforce weapons. He'll also infuse your weapons with certain abilities, such as like fire, um, raw, sharp, strong, lightning, whatever. Um, he'll also repair your equipment. Now, equipment, uh, equipment degradation in this game is a little different. It's not as bad as it was in Dark Souls 2. Uh, here's a little fun fact about the equipment degradation in Dark Souls 2. It actually went by frames per second. So when it went to PC, the frames per second doubled because it went from 30 frames to 60 frames per second. And when that happened, your weapon started to degrade two times faster. So it was actually a little harder to play on PC. Anyway, he'll also uh, reinforce your Estus Flask if you have Estus Flask shards, uh, which are the things you use to heal in this game. It's your only healing item. So, you know, always good to come back when you have it to upgrade the amount of uses you get, a get out of it. He'll also allow you to allot it so you can go from you can change it all to your Ashen Estus Flask if you're a caster, or if you use your weapon skill a lot. Um, and you can you can kind of choose whatever. So for now, I'm going to choose 3-1, um, because I do have Pyromancy. Um, actually, nah, screw that. Nah, yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah. I'm going to confirm, keep it the same. Now, the more you talk to him, the more he's just going to explain everything I just did. Weapons so I'm going to skip most of it. Mister, but when overused, when Ned use a powder... But should I hammer them? They take blah, some. blah, blah. Talk to him again, uh, and you get a little surprise. Bring this, bring this, bring this, bring this, bring 
Hurrah! Yeah, we got a new thing. Okay. Pretty be careful. I don't want to see my work squandered. <laughs> so everybody in Dark Souls laughs. No idea why, but they always end their dialogue on a <laughs> No clue why. Um it makes you think that they're all shady. Oh how the You're right. It isn't there. Anywho, there's two more people to speak to. There's going to be this guy here, uh, Crest Bro, <laughs> the Crestfallen Warrior, is in every single Souls game so far. There's always one guy who's just defeated and pretty much was on the same journey you were, but has fallen into despair after realizing how hard the game actually is. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. And it have us seek the lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we're talking true legends with the metal to limp the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. Don't you think? And of course, he gives me my favorite emote in the game, which is not that, <laughs> which is Collapse. Oh, this game's too sad. Uh, let's see. He has more to say, though. You can roll out of emotes. What a sick joke. Asking us to seek... No, nope, maybe he doesn't have more to say. Anyway... What he says pretty much is a little bit interesting, um, how they've been dead for a while, these Lords of Cinder, and they were resurrected by the bell just like we were, except they refused to follow fate. They refused to become true Lords of Cinder, and they went back to where they were when before they died, um, I assume, and it's up to us to bring them back. and help bring on a new age of fire or change fate itself and the last one to speak to is this little guy he is another lord of cinder except unlike the others he has decided to accept his fate all that unkindled and a seeker of lords i am ludlith of Corland. Look not in bewilderment, as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my child corpse. This sad cadaver, no need to be coy. Have a closer look. No style of our purpose. Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The fast fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is, I became a lord of Cinder. I may be but small. But I will die a colossus. Now, now, do not be away over long. So, essentially, him, and I assume, like all the others before him, helped to link the fire before. And when that happens, you pretty much become kindling. You get burned by it, and you ignite it. Um... So I assume that these guys have done it before. Uh, they seem to have a mass of souls. I'm not sure how. Um, but they've become strong enough to use that to link the flame itself. Now, he's decided to stay. But he's going to be a key character later on. After about, I think, the third boss or so. He's going to help us get um, boss weapons from their souls. Which is going to be freaking awesome. But anyway, if you come up here, you're going to see the giant tree 
Uh, this is from Dark Souls 2. He drops a seed that pretty much whenever you get invaded, the seed will turn the enemies in your world hostile against the invader as well. So that should help you out a little bit if you're dealing with somebody who seems to be kicking your ass. Um, this is the door that the key, uh, the, sh the handmaiden had a key that was like 20,000 souls that I pointed out. This is um, the door that it opens. And it's going to lead us up here into the tower up top. But there is a way to get up here without actually having to buy the key. Because normally you'd buy the key, you go up there, you drop down, and everyone's happy. You see there's a ladder here to make a quick shortcut for you. Um, but there is a tiny little... I don't know if it's a glitch. I really think FromSoft left this in there because they like to do little things like this. They like to reward people for tempting fate. And uh, I'm going to mess it up a few times, I'm sure, so I'll probably fast forward a little bit through it. But let's see if we can make it. There we go. There we go. I always have a hard time with that. <laughs> um, but essentially, you can run up the tree, make a sharp right, and then you can jump up onto here. Um, which I, I, again, I really feel like they allowed you to do that because of this item here is so tempting when you see it. Um, but it's a homeward bone. Maybe it's discourage you from jumping down. I don't know. But, um, or reward you. Who knows? You can enter here which we will in a second but there is one other thing I want to grab if you go all the way around being careful not to fall down you can also land onto this little part and behind here is a crystal lizard now these guys are annoying they will be scattered throughout uh, various levels and they will run away from you and your objective is to just kill them and they drop upgrade material, but they usually drop upgrade material for things that are a little more uh, harder to upgrade. So boss weapons, special weapons, enchanted weapons. Uh, tink Twinkling Titanite is usually mo is used mostly for boss weapons, and it's going to come in handy later. Uh, regular weapons use regular Titanite. So like the Titanite shard I picked up earlier um, in the beginning of the level is going to be useful. I believe there's another one laying around somewhere, but... Probably won't find it. But for now, let's head over here. As you can see, I'm playing online. That's why the messages and the blood splats are everywhere. Probably going to turn that off later because I don't want to get invaded while I'm recording. But our first Estus Shard is here, which is going to allow us to get four Estus Shards instead of three. You. You. Me. Me. Pickle B. So that's Pickle P and Pumperum. Every Souls game has a crow that you can trade to. They usually have themes. In this game, it seems to be like a random uh, loot table. So like, um, Dark Souls 2 is like anything smooth. So like smooth stones, small smooth silky stones um, would get you an item. In this game, since it's random, you kind of have to figure out what's going to give you what. So in this case, a Homeward Bone is going to give us a... A emote for call over which is awesome and the iron bracers from the sunlight warrior set which we'll get later um, but I'm gonna equip that now uh, if you give them the wrong item they will say no so you'll know for a fact that you got it or not um, we're also gonna get rid of maybe point down no uh, let's get rid of the bow I don't like the bow so let's switch it out for call over. Hey. <laughs> okay, so last but not least, we're not done yet. There's more to this place. This is why this place is awesome. I don't want to talk to you. So after you're done talking to the to Pickle P and Pumperum, you head over here and you'll find your first illusionary wall or illusory wall. And you can hit it, go through it, and you're gonna find one of the best items in the game, especially to start with which is this right here the covetous silver serpent ring this ring is gonna give you more yield you more souls um, from fallen foes 
So in this case, more money equals more levels, more items you could buy, yada yada yada. Always a good thing to have. Oh, by the way, there's a nice little thing to know. Each throne has an engraving in the back. And this will kind of give you a hint as to where you're going, who you're going to be fighting, and a little hint as to who they are. Um, yeah, other than that, that's really it. That's all there is to the Firelink Shrine in the beginning. So uh, I thank you guys for watching this video. And if you like it, please, you know, like, comment, uh, like. If you have anything to say, you can comment down below. Um, yeah, and if you would like to do me a favor, you can subscribe if you want to see more content or uh, if you just want to help a brother out. But uh, until next time, guys, it's been fun. Keep the squad alive, and I'll see you next time.